Social media. You use it, your mum has it, and chances are even your dog has an account. It's no secret that social media has become an essential and fundamental part of our lives. Of course, like any new technology or innovation, social media presents both challenges and benefits to our society. Therefore, the question remains is, social media, is it a friend or a foe? Social media on its own is any platform or tool online which allows users to share content with one another and engage in a social activity. If you picture yourself as a user of social media, the manner in which you choose to engage with others and what you choose to post, whether it be positive or negative, is entirely up to you, the user. Which brings me to my contention for tonight. Social media itself is neither a friend nor a foe, but merely an online platform whose nature is entirely determined by the intentions of the user. It is a reflection of human nature and decisions, rather than that of social media platforms themselves. This is evident in the general layout and purpose of social media sites, and the varying manner in which users and communities interact with social media. Firstly, the layout and purpose of social media sites is such that they are merely designed as a platform or tool with which users can share or respond to content at their own discretion. At their core, social media user interfaces are relatively neutral. Therefore, the content of which sites like Facebook and Instagram are made up is entirely, be it hateful or grateful, is determined entirely by the decisions of the user, not the platforms themselves. In their mission statement, Facebook's purpose is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together, and to share and express what matters to them. Similarly, Instagram states that its mission is to capture and share the world's moments. Notice that there is nothing in these statements which asks users to post certain content of a particular nature, for example, a personal life update or an inflammatory political comment. Social media can be addictive to some users, but as with all activities which are addictive, there is a safe level of social media use, which is determined by the user. Sites themselves are not inherently good or bad. It's whether you, as a user, decide to act as a friend or foe that determines this for your small corner of the internet. Social media friend or foe, or social media use or abuse. Secondly, not only is the content you post on social media determined by you, but also the content you view and are exposed to. Due to the layout of social media in terms of newsfeed algorithms and a variety of different styles of content available across multiple platforms, the user ultimately determines the type of content to which they are exposed on social media. It therefore follows that the nature of content, whether it be upsetting or pleasing, that the user is exposed to via social media is at the responsibility of said users and their peers, not of the platforms themselves. It's true, opinionated echo chambers and biased content forums exist on social media. However, these are generated by the user's political opinions and the nature of the content they like, from the New York Times to a recycled minions meme posted by your auntie. Therefore, it stands to be said that, rather than social media containing inherently good or bad content and thus being labelled as a friend or foe itself, the user is instead responsible for generating a positive or negative experience for the site which brings me to my last point. There is substantial variation in the manner and purpose with which users engage different platforms on social media. The purpose of, for example, Twitter versus Snapchat could and often does differ so heavily for a social media user that a blanket label social media as a whole as being beneficial or destructive in nature is simply illogical. Once again, the varied experience of an individual user on different social media platforms is what will determine their positive or negative interaction with social media. Imagine, for example, a career-driven person who enjoys and benefits from networking on LinkedIn and sharing thought leadership on Twitter, who simultaneously refuses to use platforms like Instagram due to their belief of the prevalence of narcissistic content on such sites. To this person, the content on platforms like Facebook and Instagram may seem irrelevant or irritating, but to the next person who is, for example, a YouTuber with 100k followers who documents their time playing Fortnite, the experience in association with social media platforms and content is completely different. Thus, 
Each individual's idea of which aspects of platforms of social media are addictive or essential, annoying or entertaining is determined only by the nature of the user themselves. Overall, the experience and effect of each user on social media and the judgment as to whether the content one is viewing is helpful or harmful is relative to the type of person the individual is. Social media platforms are essentially a blank canvas whose content and whether this content be deemed positive or negative is determined entirely by the users themselves. Therefore, we should reinterpret blank statements such as social media friend or social media foe as social media. The experience is what you make it. Thank you. Tonight, as you're already aware, is FOMO is a real thing. In terms of the way that humans experience FOMO, in terms of the way that when, for example, um, your friends are going out and doing things and you're not able to participate for some reason, for example, FOMO feels very real. So indeed, FOMO in terms of the human experience, in terms of the way we experience it, is indeed very real. Um, picture this, you're at college, you're studying because you have an exam tomorrow and all of your friends are out. You know that you should study, logically in your mind you know that that's your priority, that's what you need to do, but you can't help that feeling in the back of your mind that just keeps saying, I wish I was out with them. What am I missing out on? Um, what fun things could I be doing right now? Is that a better thing that I could be doing for myself? Although it's so logical, and in that sense, because it's illogical, perhaps you could argue that it's not real, it is real in the way that you feel it. It is real in the way that it drives people to do things that maybe they should or shouldn't. For example, go out instead of study. Or perhaps it can be good. Perhaps it can make you do things like some peer pressure can that you otherwise wouldn't do. But should we let FOMO drive us to do things? Should we let FOMO be real in our lives? Um, on one hand, in terms of the way that it can allow you to do new things, it can allow you to try new things and maybe go out and try things that you otherwise wouldn't. Yes, it, you should allow it to be real in your life. You should allow it to affect you. But in the sense that it can be irrational, it can make you feel these illogical senses of jealousy, of um, fear, um, of missing out on things that you really don't need to worry about missing out on, then no, you shouldn't let it be real in your life. So, to conclude, FOMO has positives and negatives. FOMO is real in the sense that you experience it. Um, should you let FOMO be real in your life? Yes and no, depending on the situation. Thank you.